Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, I wanted to discuss a rumor that has been absolutely circulating the internet at rapid speed, and it concerns the power consumption figures of RTX 40, aka Lovelace. In fact, quite a few people emailed or DM'd me about this asking my opinion. So just to give you guys a quick bit of history, it's been known for quite some time that the next generation of cards from both AMD and Nvidia are quite power hungry. I've heard and I've mentioned multiple times now in videos that according to everything I'm hearing, RDNA 3, specifically the highest end flagship SKUs in the Navi 31 lineup, are probably gonna have 375 watts um, for the reference model as its power consumption and maybe up to around 425 to 450 for the super duper clocked custom versions from um, AIBs. So just for example, you know, like a super version from MSI or Sapphire or whatever, it's going to have a higher power consumption. There's not anything super unusual about that, but even so, that's a lot of power. As for NVIDIA, well, it's kind of interesting. So for a long time, we've known that Lovelace is going to have a higher power consumption than RDNA 3. But to my understanding, and I've heard this from multiple sources, initially the power consumption figures for Lovelace weren't quite as bonkers. But essentially, NVIDIA decided, well, uh, RDNA 3, gee whiz, it's looking to be really fast. Um, we need to bump up the power consumption figures because obviously what they're essentially saying is we want to crank the clock frequencies of the GPUs and memory higher because obviously even memory itself requires power. It's not like, you know, GDDR6X memory is uh, free in terms of power consumption. Um, so I've heard that the clock frequency of the higher end SKUs from Lovelace is around 2.5 gigahertz and that the die itself, again, for the highest end SKUs, is kind of large. And by kind of large, I'm slightly, uh, I'm not really giving it credit. I've heard figures up to 90 billion transistors, which, quite frankly, it's just, I mean, you know, it, it, just for fun, go ahead and look at some old reviews after you listen to this video, of course, um, of cards like the RX 480 or the, you know, Radeon 9800 or whatever, you know, the older cards from the early 2000s or whatever. And you would, you know, kind of see figures of like millions or billion, a couple of billion transistors and we're like, oh, gee whiz, that's big. And now we're talking about like 90 billion, assuming my information is right. Um, so that is actually quite close to the rectical limit of uh, TSMC's 5NM process. And that does mean that technically, you know, thermal density is not such a big thing. I mean, I say that with A, not 100% knowledge of the Lovelace architecture, and B, um, assuming you're not cramming like 800 watts of power through the thing. And this brings us to today's rumor, and it's courtesy of Grayman. Now, I'm going to read this verbatim. I am not clear at the moment whether one model has three TGP ranges or whether it has three models, but the TGP number for AD102 is 450, 650, and 850. He stresses, or they stress, I'm not sure whether it's a male or female, but I'm assuming it's a male for this. Um, but it's not final specification, and there may be some deviation. Also, side note, um, Grayman's also mentioning that it's going to be available in September. I've personally heard September as well, give or take a month. I've heard September, possibly August, possibly October, but yeah, splitting the difference. I've frequently heard September. Basically, it's going to launch earlier than AMD's GPUs, which is, well, it has some benefits. Obviously, they'll kind of have the market to themselves. Now, basically speaking, I'm hearing that this figure for 850 watts is not NVIDIA's reference design. Now, I am hearing that Lovelace is kind of a hungry, hungry hippo when it comes to energy. Um, I've heard figures up to like, let's say low 500 watts, like 500, 550. <laughs> it's, I don't really think you can use low and 500 together, um, but you get my point. But with the said... 850, one source did get back to me and told me that they think it's a custom variant 
possibly for something like a kingpin card. Um, and they believe that it's possible that, you know... I mean, you guys know that you can have, like, custom kingpin. I'm just saying kingpin for an example. But let's say a custom kingpin card. And these things are designed specifically around just cranking up the power consumption to absolute 11 and just, you know, beating, you know, world records at 3D Mark or whatever. Um... And clearly, these are not going to be, you know, using something like a standard reference blower cooler or whatever. They're going to be using, like, dry ice or liquid nitrogen or what have you. And obviously, they've got, like, a power delivery system that is probably better than, you know, most countries' electrical grid. Um, because you're probably going to need an electrical grid of your own to power this thing. And this kind of brings me back to the point. Now, I could possibly see 850 watts as well for certain variants, and I have heard that Lovelace is going to have cards which are specifically for, like, HPC. I'm not at this point clear, though, how they differ from Hopper. To my personal understanding, Hopper is going to be a card which is just absolutely tremendous in AI performance, like... I'm hearing it's just ridiculous in AI, but I don't know what the overlap is, if any, between it and um, uh, Lovelace. To be totally honest with you, so my personal my personal bet is that you know don't expect Nvidia to go on stage and Jensen to announce the RTX 4090 and the standard reference power consumption is 800 watts, because I personally don't believe it's true um based upon what i've heard from multiple different sources with this said something could have changed and i will stress that greenman generally has a pretty good track record and i'm not crapping on their information because again i have heard that one or two custom cards could have this with that said I just, you know, I, I don't want people to go into the the next generation with this, like, vision of you basically needing, like, an air conditioner and possibly, like, a couple of, uh, you know, nuclear reactors to power your next generation PC if you're going with something like, like an RTX 4060 or whatever, because it's just not going to happen. Um, I'm going to be really curious to see how the next generation ends up. Uh, to be honest with you, because, you know, ultimately, these cards, to my personal understanding, are going to be ridiculously fast. Ultimately, they are designed with the idea to, um, and I'm talking about both NVIDIA and AMD here, they're designed around the notion of 4K 120Hz or above gaming, because, as most of you know at this point, like, 4K TVs have come down a lot in price, especially if you go with variable refresh rate. And you can, you know, it's it's not going to be that long into the future before we start to see ultra-high refresh rate 4K screens, like, become quite prevalent in the market. So, yeah. Um, it's obviously just going to be kind of expensive. I don't really have much more to say on this topic. Um, this video was actually not supposed to be up today because I was working on a couple of other things. But, uh, yeah, I, as I said, there's just been so many people message me about this particular topic, which I do appreciate because obviously, you know, at the end of the day, I'm some, you know, some random dude that's giving you opinions. So it's kind of, it's quite humbling that people are asking why what I'm what I'm hearing about this. But there you go. Um I don't really have much more to say about this one. It was a quickie. It was quick and dirty. I'm probably yeah, okay. Well, we're just gonna leave that there. With that said, thanks very much for uh watching the video and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.